what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel uh thank you all for being here and tuning in last week here in arkansas we had some crazy crazy snow and then on top of that i end up catching the flu so i was not able to come out here and do any kind of videos um it was so cold out here in my shop even with my little heater going it was just unbearable to be in here so i just i didn't even try to come out here to the shop because it was just so cold in here but uh thank you for everybody who has been tuning in watching the videos um thank you everybody who's been subscribing oh excuse me uh if you like the videos uh you know what to do smash the thumbs up button drop comments share the videos and of course hit that subscribe button i think i am still at 98 percent of the viewers are not subscribed to the channel so if you could help me out hit that subscribe button that way you know you'll know whenever i put out a video and then you always be able to watch them <clears throat> so for today's topic um what I'm going to talk about goes along with my gun talk stuff. And as much as everybody loves to talk about the guns and training with your gun and whether you're trying to be the next uh, Dev Guru member or the next Green Beret or you're just trying to run around here in, in your suit and be the next John Wick something that does not get talked about a whole lot when it comes to uh, concealed carry or open carry or just carrying a, a firearm in general something that gets overlooked and it is a very very important uh, subject to cover is your medical if you're going to be out there with the potential to put holes in other human beings you need to be able to also plug those holes. Also understand that there is a chance that you might be on the receiving end of getting shot. You want to have some uh, medical equipment on you so that way you can do some, some uh, first aid or some self aid rather to help prolong your your lifespan while you're waiting on medical emergency to get there and get you off to a hospital so what i've got here is my black hawk uh this is the travis kennedy uh backpack and basically travis kennedy uh he's a former navy seal he's an ambassador with black hawk he worked with those guys to put this backpack together uh whenever you go to blackhawk.com and you're looking for this bag you can get it where it's just the bag itself or you can get it with um one pack of a uh an ifac individual first aid kit and that way you'll have some medical stuff now for me when i'm on duty um on my everyday vest that i wear when i'm out on patrol and stuff i have one of the blackhawk ifac packs on me i also have one of the blackhawk tourniquet carriers so i carry a tourniquet on my vest i carry an extra tourniquet in my pocket as as, as well as some first aid stuff and that uh ifac that i carry on my vest same thing with my plate carrier that i have i have a a tourniquet that i keep in one of the pockets on the on the cummerbund and then i have a um a tourniquet holder on my belt that i wear with that plate carrier and on that plate carrier it already has a spot for you to put some medical equipment so i've always when i'm on duty i've always got some first aid stuff on me now i have two of these backpacks this particular backpack i just took out of my truck so anywhere i go and i'm in my truck I carry this and then if need be I can take it out of my truck and throw it in my wife's car or whatever if we're going on a trip somewhere and we're taking her car I'll throw this bag in there to have medical equipment I also have another one of these bags uh, that stays in my patrol car that setup is for if I have to do some kind of first aid on other people um, I, I explained earlier that um in one of my other videos that i got certified with a group called alert uh it's advanced law enforcement 
rapid response training. And one of the things they they teach, they do all the, they do the studying and stuff on all the major events such as school shootings, uh, mass shootings such as the Jason Aldean concert that was in Las Vegas or the the Pulse nightclub shooting that was in Orlando. They study these things and try to figure out, you know, where was the breakdown within the first responders everybody always harps on the police because we're the ones that we go in and we're supposed to stop the bad guy but there is also a breakdown when it comes to getting first aid to these people so i'm going to say there is a breakdown in the communication within first responders sometimes that communication is merely a, a policy thing such as um, if you have a situation going on, let's say in a, in a workspace, in an, an office building, okay, and that fire department who is the, um, your first, your medical, if their policy states that they can't go into that building until they know for sure that the threat is neutralized, officers need to be able to do some first aid or as uh, alert calls it, uh, tactical emergency casualty care that is basically where the officers are providing some basic first aid uh, first aid I'm not gonna say stuff but the the law enforcement is providing some basic first aid so that way you can transport those wounded out to your medical personnel your your ambulance units and then they can get them to the hospital to get advanced medical that's going to save their life but we need to be able to make sure that they're going to make that trip okay so in here i'm just going to go over a few things uh I'm, here's what i'm gonna do backpack this is the upright i'm gonna lay it down i know you guys can't see this i'm going to start on this pocket here then i will go to the left pocket and then i'm going to open up the middle so on my right side, I've got one CPR mask. Uh, this does work for infants up to adults, but it's just your basic first aid mask to cover the person's face. It has the one-way valve for you to breathe, so that way you're not having any skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact, and then that way also no transfer of any biological fluids of any kind. So. You know, always, always keep that there. You never know when you come across somebody that needs uh, CPR. In the left pocket, I have a pair of trauma shears. And most of the stuff that I got, um, I got this from the uh, North American Rescue. You can go to their website and order their the IFAC kits or if you want to get a larger kit because you have a larger setup, you can order that stuff. Um, if I'm remembering correctly military law enforcement first responders all of that stuff uh, they have programs for us to get discounts just go on there look for it and it'll tell you what all you need to do um, I'll link that down below also to help you guys out with that but I got a pair of trauma shears uh, both backpacks are basically set up the same so there is a pair of trauma shears uh, in this pocket I have one, two, three, four, five. Five of the cat tourniquets. Uh, cat tourniquet is a, a very well trusted uh, brand of tourniquets. It's used by the military, uh, it's used by law enforcement. Uh, beware, there are knockoffs that you can get on Amazon that are extremely cheap, but just please remember if you pay for cheap equipment you're going to get uh cheap quality and i for one am not going to put my life behind 15 dollar 20 dollar tourniquet i can't remember how much tourniquets cost on north american rescue but i would much rather pay the amount on north american rescue because you know you're getting a a good tourniquet from this company like i said the north american rescue brand versus you getting some knockoff and then when you need it you got to tighten it down and then it break on you and 
you're screwed. Tourniquets are used on your um, extremities, so your legs and arms. Uh, there is a saying amongst uh, first responders, military, and the guys with alert. Uh, two is one, one is none. So I have five in here. Uh, for your legs, you can double up, use two of them. You only need one on your arms. So, you know, make sure you have plenty of tourniquets and there's plenty of training that's out there that show how to use these. There are several guys that do videos on YouTube that show you how to use uh, this tourniquet as well as some of the other tourniquets that are good reputables but I'm just saying watch out for the ones that you can find on like Amazon, Wish, Geek, Timu, all of those little sites that sell things very cheap. Remember you're paying cheap so you're going to get some cheap uh, quality stuff. Okay so that's all that's in this pocket here. Okay on the top pocket right here this zipper uh, I just keep my gloves in here it's on the top so as soon as you reach in there you're grabbing gloves uh, kind of beware and kind of you know you want to stay away from black gloves because when you're doing a body search checking for wounds you want to look at your hands to see if there's blood if I run my hand on your leg and I see blood on my glove, then I know that's a spot I need to start treating right then. I don't need to do any more searching until I take care of that spot. But if you have on black gloves, it's hard to tell if it's blood or water or whatever. So uh, brown gloves or blue gloves, purple gloves, anything that the blood will show up on. Okay, and now I'm going to open this middle pocket. There is another pocket on this thing, but I'm not going to open it. Uh, you could probably put anything from a laptop to uh, ballistic panels in it if you want to. But I don't have anything in that pocket, so I'm not even going to open it. So when I open this up, in the middle here, you know, I just got some stuff put in here. This is a 511 medical pouch. It used to be on my my plate carrier, I believe, or it was on my last... A tactical belt my battle belt setup and I put it in here and I'm still trying to do some configuration on how I want all this stuff so basically what you will get I ordered this one from the alert or not alert I'm sorry from the North American rescue and this is quick clocked uh, combat gauze what you would do with this is you would use this for uh, wound packing. Uh, this particular one is infused with a uh, quick clotting uh, agent. So basically it's going to help your blood clot to help stop that bleeding, but you would use this for wound packing. Uh, if you got a stab wound and you use wound packing in junction areas, so up in this area here, you can't get a tourniquet here, but I can pack that or maybe if you get shot or stabbed up here, I can't put a tourniquet here, but I can pack that. Same thing down for, uh, same thing in the growing area. Anywhere where you can't get a tourniquet, maybe even, you know, stomach or something like that, you can pack this with this wound packing, and then you want to keep pressure on it to uh, stop the bleeding. And then... Again, this has a quick clotting agent in it, so it's going to help it uh, clot up a lot quicker. Uh, you want to keep the blood in the body, okay? Studies have shown that a lot of our uh, old wars and other encounters, uh, soldiers' lives could have been saved had we kept the blood in the body. Uh, one of the things that we teach now I know they used to teach years ago that a tourniquet was a last resort on putting on to somebody because if you cut off the blood flow to that bottom portion of a limb, then you would end up having to have that limb amputated. That is no longer the case. Uh, you can still save those limbs if you get them to the hospital fast enough, but it's not gonna do you any good if the blood leaves the body. So you need to keep the blood in. So if you come across an injury on the arm or the leg, 
then you want to get a tourniquet on that as soon as possible. And the saying is go high or die. Meaning if I am injured somewhere down here on my arm, I still want to put that tourniquet up here to shut off the blood flow at the highest point. No longer are we teaching you go about two inches above the wound. If I'm injured down here somewhere, you better put that tourniquet up here, right there where that shoulder at the top of the bicep, you want that tourniquet right there and you want it on tight. Same thing on the leg. You want that tourniquet getting up into the crotch area and you want it ratchet and strapped down as tight as possible. Keep the blood in the body, save that leg, save the life. If I have to lose my leg or arm, I'm cool with that as long as I'm still alive. So if I'm knocked out, guys, and I'm unconscious, and you see I've got a wound on my leg, I done got shot in the leg, cut in the leg, or something like that, get the tourniquet on my leg as high as you can, get it as tight as you can, and if I have to lose my leg, oh, well, I lose my leg, but I still have my life, okay? Moving on, we have a North American Rescue trauma just dressing. Uh, imagine a, a big ace bandage, and in the middle of that uh, ace bandage, you have a um, some gauze there. So with this, you can dress this on arms, legs. Uh, you can use it as a head wrap, but you want to put that gauze pad portion right on the wound. And then you want to try to get this on as tight as possible. This is to help hold pressure to help stop that bleeding. So again, if you got a, you know, you get hit somewhere and you do some wound packing on it and you're holding that wound packing and you get it to stop bleeding, go ahead and take one of these trauma dressings, wrap it over the wound packing and get it as tight as possible for one it's going to hold pressure but two you now have a bandage on that and that way you're going to one keep the blood in the body saving lives and that's just one of the good things to do right there right here i have a my twin um hyphen vent chest seals so with a chest seal just because it says chest any injuries to the torso of, of, the, of the human being, neck down to about the waist, you, what you want to do is take something and wipe the blood away from that area, from that puncture wound, and you want to put one of these over it. If there is an exit wound on the back, you want to take the other one and do the same thing. Cover the wound with this. What this will help prevent, your body was designed to take air in two ways. One, two. If you have a hole in your body somewhere, you're now taking air in through that hole as well and your body was not meant to do that. What that's gonna do is cause a tension pneumothorax, which is basically that air that's coming in that hole is crushing your lungs and it's gonna is basically like it's suffocating you you can't breathe by putting this on there for one you're closing that hole so now air can't go in and these are vented I believe let me see yes hyphen vent so there is a built-in vent on these that will allow the air to escape out of that hole but you won't suck air in through it so now you're going to relieve that pressure off of your chest and off of your lungs, be able to breathe. Again, helping you get to the hospital where you can get uh, further care. This pocket, for no particular reason, I have a, a North American Rescue Survival Blanket. You wanna keep the body temperature, um, I believe it was above Normal body temperature is 98. So you don't want to let it get down, I would say 95, 94. Because what happens is the body's natural ability to heal will start to slow down. So even on a hot day, the body will start to cool off. You want to keep that body warm. So that way uh, hypothermia doesn't set in on them and their body is able to begin its its own healing process. So inside of the um, 
the uh, 511 first aid bag on here. I just have more of this stuff here. Uh, again, I have a uh, compressed gauzes right here. And this is basically the same as this. It's just these two do not have any kind of um, hemostatic uh, clotting agents in these but it's still the same concept you will take this uh, you will have to stick your finger into that wound and find where the bleeding is coming from and then you want to start packing this into that wound as much as you can until you can't get any more in there and keep pressure on that to stop that bleeding and then take the excess wound packing and you, you just want to wad it up as best as you can and put it on top and hold pressure on that so that way you can stop that bleeding. Uh, another compressed gauze and more hyphen vents, chest seals, and then another. It's basically the same as this. They're just wrapped different, but it is the exact same thing. Four inch emergency trauma dressing. So they're the same thing, they're just wrapped different. Each one of these will come in a package. And then as you can see, they're individually vacuum sealed. That is to make sure that these stay sterilized and clean. So when you get your package, take everything out of the package and go ahead and stage it in your bag. Or if you're putting this stuff on a uh, on a plate carrier or something like that go ahead and take it out of the bag and then stage everything individually how you want to carry it so that way you know where it's at periodically I will say periodically um, go through your stuff and just check and make sure you know where everything is so that way if you need it you know how to find it you know where it's at make sure your IFAC kits that are on your um, your chest rigs or your belts that they're accessible by both hands. You don't ever want to put it one side too far to where you can't access it with your other hand. My my um, IFAC that's on my vest that I wear every day at work, it's on the right side, but it's in the front. I can reach it with the left hand. Of course, I can get it with the right hand. And then uh, talk to, if you work for a department, talk to your fellow officers. Make sure that they know where your IFAC is at and where your tourniquet is at because if you go down you want them to be able to access your stuff to give you some first aid and I know it sounds mean it's called an IFAC for a reason individual first aid kit if your department issues IFACs to each one of your officers you need to understand my IFAC is for me. If you go down, I will use your IFAC on you. If I go down, use my IFAC on me. Don't use it on somebody else because then when you need it, you won't have it. So make sure everybody understands that your IFAC is for you. And then you need to put together some kind of emergency, uh, tactical emergency bag. So that way if you have to do medical on somebody else you have all of your supplies that's needed to do that so I just wanted to go over that with you guys because like I said everybody talks about getting on the range and getting their training and getting their shooting and I've shot this many rounds through this gun but then when you ask people how do you put on a tourniquet they just kind of look at you and go huh when you even say can you put on a tourniquet within 20 seconds? They kind of look at you and go, oh, no. You need to know these things. You need to know that if you get shot, for one, you want to stay calm. Don't panic. It's going to hurt like, yeah, it's going to hurt. But you still need to stay calm. Get to your tourniquet. Get it on. Get it cinched and tightened down. Turn that windlass. Get it in the windlass clip. Make sure all the straps are tucked away so it doesn't snag on anything. Pull that safety retaining strap over. If you have a Sharpie on you, write the time on there on when you applied your tourniquet. That way, hospital staff will know how long you've had that tourniquet on. Then, get back in the fight. 
That is how you need to train. So that way, when the real thing happens, you can remain calm. You can think through everything and get everything done. And you don't end up dying out there. Okay? Stop the killing. Stop the dying. Mass casualty evac. That's what we got to do, guys. That is our mission. When it's game time, the gunshots ring out, the bullet starts flying. As first responders, that is our mission. Stop the killing, stop the dying, mass casualty evac. There's nothing else to say about that. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you found it helpful. If you got any questions, please leave comments down below. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button, share the video, and make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you click on the bell and click all. So that way, anytime I put out more videos, you guys will be notified and you'll get to see the videos when they first come out. Till then, guys, train safe, train smart. See you guys out there.